All right, everyone, remember when the uh, Texas elections were happening there and the left poured you know, enormous, legendary amounts of money and advertising and everything into Texas to try to get rid of Ted Cruz? That was a, it was like, for, for people on the left, for Democrats, the golden gem that they could possibly have had during the last election, during the midterms, would have been to unseat Ted Cruz. Because he's high profile, he had more visibly become a Trump ally, and so it was sort of like a, a miniaturized version of the election to come, the 2020 election. And of course, Beto O'Rourke lost. His real name is Robert Francis. He, he leaves Beto in there for no reason, I think, because he wants to appeal to the Hispanic voting bloc. Uh, his dirt eating and skateboarding and I was a hacker one shtick, I guess, has already worn off. And this is what, what I figured would happen. He technically has become a viable candidate, a viable contender to be the 2020 Dem nominee. But it's not likely. Uh, even the legacy media has begun to notice that that shine is worn off. Like, looking at his polling, he sort of rises to the mid-single digits to like 5 or 6%. In a packed field, that's not bad. It put him in the top 4 or 5, you know, variously. Well, I think, uh, by the way, Kamala Harris has dropped out of the top five. She's nowhere to be found. Sanders is faltering. Biden has gobbled up literally everything. He's above 50 in half these polls. He's probably going to be nominated, even if he stumbled right now. I can't imagine that he would lose enough steam uh, not to win Iowa, which gives him a boost. He can knock Sanders out in New Hampshire. He can knock everyone else out by Nevada. Super Tuesday comes, he sweeps half the states, he becomes the nominee. We'll know by Super Tuesday who the Dem nominee will be, barring some sort of health issue or some major crisis or, or an assassination, something crazy like that, like a once-in-a-lifetime happening. But Beto never rose further. I think the highest poll had him at 9 or 10, uh, which, again, is good. It makes him viable in a crowded field, but then he's stalled out and he's failed to go anywhere further. The thing is, the reason why some of these candidates become successful in the early race is because of charisma it's because they're a gimmick basically he's a gimmick he's a gimmick character he, he he was they were trying to cast him off as the next obama as well this is the rising star of the democrats they were banking on him to win in texas and he didn't after texas they were banking on him making a huge show about the immigration crisis remember his feud with donald trump there in what was it fort worth or something and they were both giving speeches the legacy media and shills tried their best to cover for the fact that Beto O'Rourke's speech was attended by a tenth as many people as Trump. They tried to gaslight the entire U.S. population, and they were t totally proven wrong time and time again. The, some of these local new media heads were hoodwinked by someone pretending to be a member of the police force there or something like that, which I guarantee was shenanigans. I hope somebody got fired for that, by the way. They probably don't want to talk about it publicly because like, oh shit, somebody unauthorized to actually represent our group to the media claimed that Beto O'Rourke had about ten times as many people at his uh, uh, crowd, at his rally as he actually did. Provably because you can actually look at the peak attendance on his own Twitter handle. Uh, and Beto never said anything and said, well, no, that's not actually true, which was, you know, one less for him, I suppose. But he goes there and he acts like an evangelical and he gyrates around on stage and flails his hands around and does crazy shit. Says he wants to tear down the border wall completely. And supposedly this was popular. But it was only popular among people who are guaranteed to vote for whoever the Democratic nominee is. The DNC may be dumb, but they're not that dumb. They understand that if you have some candidate who very early on leans so far to the left that they can't lurch back towards the center, you're not going to win the election. That's why they don't want, like, a Sanders thing. It's not even, well, they stand against true liberalism or something. No, no, it's not, it's not about ideology. It's about electability and money. They're worried, of, yeah, they are worried about this new crop of grassroots-style progressives because they bring in less corporate cash. If that corporate cash ends up going back to the Republican Party after two decades of it slowly, you know, uh, wave, uh, wavering and going more and more towards the Dems, like Hillary Clinton outraised and outspent Trump 10 to 1 in corporate cash, Half of his cash was self-funded, the rest of it was largely grassroots. Hillary Clinton, the Democrat, was the big money candidate. Made, made more, spent more, had more big donors by a huge margin. We're talking, you know, what, a billion dollars of corporate cash from Goldman Sachs and Merrill, Merrill Lynch and all these groups? Now, Beto O'Rourke was always a gimmick. Look, you got this dude. He's kind of young-ish. He's kind of well-spoken, but he just doesn't have the it factor. I'm sorry, but looking at the candidates, here's the thing. Look at them and think about if you were casting for a movie 
and you wanted someone to play the president of the United States. I pointed this out, I think, like late last year. Look at the people and see, do they look believable in that role? That's a big question you have to ask. For Trump, he doesn't have that problem. He's already president. For Biden, he doesn't have that problem. He's already been VP. It's close enough. He, he's believable in that role. Even if you don't, don't think about policy, don't think about anything like that. Don't think about whether you like them. Don't think about whether their beliefs make sense or not, or even necessarily fully how they speak. Only look at the way they present themselves. It's the way they dress, the way they act, a little bit of how they speak, the charisma of their elocution as well. Beto O'Rourke's big problem is twofold. Number one, he's a goofball, and he's deliberately branded himself as a gimmicky do goofball sort of Gen X candidate. That's a problem for older voters especially, I think. That's number one. And number two, his elocution's all off. It doesn't, you, you don't do this when you're speaking. He looks like an idiot when he speaks. And then uh, further beyond that, once you look at that, so that's, that's like two marks against him. And the third strike and he's out, really, uh, is the fact that on immigration, he's <laughs> basically the anti-Trump. The problem is, I think that if you offered America's... Now, I know this is a false dichotomy. This decision isn't actually the one we have to make, but boil it down and simplify it to, do you want to defend the border a lot or not at all? What do you think most people are going to choose? And this includes people in the center left. And again, the DNC knows this. They're not going to be rooting for Beto. What they want, they want Beto to be there, to lend an, an air of, of, of young voter star power to the race. Sort of like Sanders with a lot of his younger white male voters... Warren with her, her feminist voters, actually. Uh, some of these, you know, younger socialistic voting blocs. Kamala Harris to an extent on certain wedge issues. And then you have, like, Beto. And, and arguably Pete Buttigieg, I would say, is part of that, too. I mean, he's an openly gay candidate and stuff. So, you know, a little bit different demographically from the average Democrat, which tends to be more like Joe Biden. I think the Democrats are the older party now, too, if I remember correctly. Like, demographically, like, um... And Democrats have been absorbing more older voters. Republicans, I think, have been absorbing more younger voters. So, compared to in the past, I mean, it's still a lopsided proposition, but it's less than it was before, I mean. Uh, if the Democrats have, you know, somebody like Joe Biden, a geriatric old white dude, dynastic politician from the 70s in there, uh, it might be a problem, but Beto's not the answer. I've already discussed the people that I think are the most viable, and they, they're nowhere to be found. The Gabbards and the Julian Castros, and arguably, at least in the past, the Gillibrands, they've all been totally shafted. They're not even on half the polls. Somebody, and, and then you have gimmick candidates. Again, you have Beto, you have Yang, uh, some of these others that, you know, they say one or two things, they gain a voting block, it's very fervent, but ultimately it disqualifies them from even being the nominee. I still think it's very likely that Joe Biden gets in unless he falters. He can destroy himself, and he can get fucked at the debates. Other than that, though, he's pretty much gutted in the bag. And the, Dem you know, the younger Democrats, the further left ones, need to understand that as well. But sitting there eating dirt and talking about how you skateboard is not going to win you an election. <clears throat> so it's funny. Even the legacy media now, again, archived link in the description, is saying that his shine has worn off. He's going to retool his campaign and literally relaunch it before the first debate to try to inject some more enthusiasm into things. But he's not a very enthusiastic uh, kind of guy. He just happens to be younger than most of his opponents. That's really all it was about. He's, he's younger, and so he can look a little bit better than maybe Bernie Sanders on the average day for the cameras. That's really the only thing he's got going for him. But then again, he could say the same about like a Kamala or a Tulsi Gabbard. That's about all. Peace out.